Lily Langtree, actress. I'll be with you presently. So sorry to have kept you waiting. I've been in that costume since the matinee. Oh, and it's a relief to get it off. We're not on again until tomorrow evening. We're not performing tomorrow afternoon, as in the morning I have a sitting with some of your fine photographers, and often these things can overrun. So that, of course, has rather annoyed Mr. Webber. He's my producer. And the theatre owners, as undoubtedly they would have sold many more tickets, but photographs are needed for the papers, and to autograph, of course. So I'll keep the arrangement. I think that's only polite. Now, before we start, I must see about these wonderful items. I do get bombarded by such lovely gifts from well-wishers. It's so delightful. The roses from Mr. Edson, your mayor here. And an invitation to the grand opening of the New York and Brooklyn Bridge. <laughs> oh, by the President of the United States, no less. What an occasion, and me, I'm just a humble actress. I've heard that Mr. Barnum and Jumbo his elephant might even cross it. What a sight that will be. Oh, and of course, lilies. From dear Oscar. That's Mr. Wilde, the poet and playwright. He encouraged me early on in my adventures on the stage. A dear and talented man. He's an Irishman, of course. Well, like so many in New York. Oh, champagne. From Edward, my husband. Oh, he's to remind me I'm to be at the party tonight no later than 11. He's so good attending everything I must go to. He's not so much a social animal as I am. It does tire him so looking after me. But he is a rock. Now this. Hmm. Oh. Now this is very fine. <clears throat> From dear Freddy. A new friend I've met here. He's in steel and railways. Oh, and he's had to go to his ranch. It's in California. An awfully long way. He has horses there. But has promised that we'll meet up as soon as possible. He wishes to take me to the races. <laughs> Another adventure to look forward to. Now these questions from your readers. Firstly, I must say, I am touched that so many people wish to know about me. Now these first two questions are sort of related, so if you don't mind, I'll answer them together. Why did your parents call you Lily and are you named after the flower or vice versa? My parents christened me Emily Charlotte. Emily being my mother's name. As for the flower, it was a nickname I was given when I was much younger before I took to the stage or became known by society. A very popular artist, Mr. Millay, painted me holding a lily, a very pretty little one. Although from Guernsey, I confess. And it sort of just helped the name stick. I rather like it, don't you? Do your parents approve of you being on stage? Well, I think it's become very respectable for females to appear on the stage. And there's very many good and suitable roles. And I, like so many others, believe that women should not just be decorative or consigned to domesticity. I was very lucky that my father, Reverend William, dean and very important man on Jersey, insisted on I having an education and exposed me to languages and the arts. Some of my brothers, though, weren't so keen, but they soon learnt that I could not be held back with my desire to be more independent. So long as the material is right and proper, then why should women not appear in front of audiences? Are you enjoying New York? <laughs> A question I am so often asked. On my first day, it was the most popular, I recall even down to how I found the paving stones on Fifth Avenue. A truly amazing city. The hotels are so luxurious, the dining wonderful and beautifully laid out with Mr. Edison's new electric lighting, a much safer method than gas. 
I am told it was a faulty gas lamp that caused the theatre to burn down on my opening night. The new marvellous bridge. I simply adore Central Park and the wonderful Statue of Liberty. It was dark and gloomy when we arrived in the early hours of the morning. I could see but the barest flicker of her light. But we did have a brass band play for us as we disembarked. Oh, and poor old Oscar was dragged from his slumbers to be there to present me with a bunch of lilies. Since then, I have enjoyed my stay so very much. It's a city to truly be proud of. Are you not tired by the attention? Hmm. Well, I'm certainly kept very busy. And really, who knows when this all might end? And there are plenty of plays to perform, and theatres across America and Canada are clamouring to have me perform. So wise people are willing to pay the price of admission, I should continue. After all, I'm only in my third year of acting, only just thirty, so whilst I have my health and strength, I shall continue. Who is the most famous person I have met? Hmm, well, so many names. I've already mentioned Oscar, of course, and there's been painters and poets, men of business, lords. I suppose if I think of Americans, well, I did meet President Ulysses Grant at a dinner recently, and I must confess that my knowledge of history is poor, and at first I had no idea of his political greatness, just his career as a general. I actually met my first famous American at a party in England at Lord Horton's house in London. Mr. Miller, the poet of the Sierras. A fascinating figure. He saw me and scribbled down these words. If all God's world a garden were, and all women were but flowers, if men were bees that busied there through endless summer hours, Oh, I would hung God's garden through, for honey till I came to you. That's rather charming, don't you think? Others, my dear friend Sarah Bernhardt, the most famous actress of our age, a remarkable and prodigious talent. We share many of the same friends too. Mr George Bernard Shaw, the playwright, is charming, as is Mr Hugo, the French novelist. But it goes without saying that everyone in America is fascinated by our royal family. I am very fortunate to have met many members of Her Majesty's fine family. Prince Leopold, for instance, so charming and wonderful. Her youngest son, a great patron of the arts. He told me he keeps a picture of me on his desk. And, of course, hmm. <laughs> My dear, dear Bertie. He's so loyal and supportive. Her oldest son, sorry, I mean <laughs> Prince Edward, the Prince of Wales. A weekend away, shooting or hunting at one of his homes is a wonderful experience. And the parties he gives? So delightful and simply glittering. But as the question asks... The most famous person, well, that has to be Her Majesty Queen Victoria, of course. I was presented to her at Buckingham Palace. I brought my mother and aunt over to ensure I was dressed perfectly. I didn't want to trust a servant with such a momentous task. I had been told that Her Majesty might not stay for all the presentations, as they can be long and, well, arduous. The Princess of Wales, or one of her daughters, often takes on the duty but much to my great honour, she stayed till the end. I have no doubt that Her Majesty was far more fatigued than I after the many hours the occasion took, but she was so dignified, the very embodiment of majesty. We did not speak. I merely curtsied as she held out her hand and nodded gracefully. I was wearing three little ostrich feathers in my hair, a little joke on the Prince of Wales' own emblem. And to this day, I have no idea if Her Majesty thought it humorous or not. But some months later, we were shooting on a Scottish Lord's estate, and we decided to visit Her Majesty's house, Balmoral, to record our names in the visitor's book. 
the Queen, on seeing my name, remarked, I would like to have seen Mrs Langtree. <laughs> now I know we shall never be on close terms. My lowly status, of course, prevents that. I do like to think that we'd engage in a polite conversation. Now I must keep an eye on the time. I'm to be at this party and I don't wish to keep my husband and other guests waiting. But this one here, this one rather caught my eye. With all the current interest in other planes and spiritualism, do you believe in ghosts? Well, I have attended one of Sarah Bernhardt's seances, and I must say, voices and spirits from the other side, well, they were sadly lacking. Perhaps it was the presence in one's lacking in belief that rather put them off. But as for ghosts, well, I have been one. Living next to St. Saviour's Church in Graveyard, there were several occasions where my brothers and I, we would creep out of the house, stand upon stilts, throwing bedsheets over our heads, we'd scare the locals with our ghostly impressions. And then one day, my father then received a letter from someone saying they were going to test to see if ghosts could withstand pellets from a shotgun. And then we had to stop. This really has to be the last, I'm afraid. How long are you staying in the United States? Well, I do have performances to give back in England, of course. And I really sadly must be going in just a few months. But I do intend to travel and give shows wherever possible. It is so gratifying that so many people wish to see me perform. I also do look to the business side of theatrical life too. And whilst my husband's business matters have not been as rosy as they were previous, it is good that I can contribute financially. On my return, I shall have a busy few months. I have been asked to open the new opera house on Jersey. That is a great honour indeed. I shall be reciting a poem in our native language of Gerier. One last thing I must add is I do intend on improving my skills whilst I'm away. I know I learn a little through each performance and my theatrical friends are always on hand to offer me wise and kind words upon my work. But your readers might like to know that I'm soon to attend the Conservatoire in Paris. They've accepted me as a student this summer. So when I return as a more accomplished actress, I shall be far more worthy of all this applause for which I'm getting and for which I'm already so grateful. <laughs> now, I really must be getting changed and ready. The carriage will be here at any moment. I do look forward to reading your articles shortly. Nice. <laughs>